question. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the Monday, January 12th Town Council meeting. Um, can, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag <laughs> of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, could we have a roll call by the town clerk? Chairman Ray? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor McCausland? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Wagner? And Councilor Walsh? Here. Thank you. Uh, moving on to town council reports and correspondence. Does anybody have anything they'd like to talk about initially? Yes, Councilor McCausland. I uh, just have a question. Mike, will you be updating us on what's going on with the library tonight? You'd like me to be? I would to do that? Happy Thank to do you. it? Okay. You want to wait till. Whenever you want. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to ask um, um, Councilor Sullivan just to give a, a quick um, overview of the meeting that will be taking place tomorrow evening. Uh, certainly. Um, tomorrow evening will be the first meeting of the uh, Solid Waste and uh, Recycling Long-Term Planning Committee. This committee was appointed by uh, Chairman Ray. Five-member committee will be meeting tomorrow night at, <coughs> at the Jordan Conference Room. Um, uh, Town Manager Mike McGovern will be there as well as Bob Malley, who is the uh, staff liaison. Our agenda is on, online, and I'm looking forward to starting that process. We have a six-month timeline to complete our work, and which is due back to the Council on June 30th, 2015. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Councilor Jordan, did you have any updates on the Fire Range Committee that you wanted to share? I know you had a meeting a couple weeks ago, maybe. Yes, and our next meeting is being rescheduled right now. We were previously scheduled to meet January 21st, but we've had some scheduling conflicts, so we're hoping that everybody's schedule will work for February 4th. So I'd be looking for updates on the website going forward. Okay, and is there any update on the last meeting? Or? No, we're just waiting to hear back for um, some bids. The RFQ just went out, and will hopefully be progressing from there. Um, okay. Thank you. Yep. And then uh, if there's nobody else, I will move on to the Finance Committee report, and I assume this would be Councillor Walsh. Thank you. Um, and you have in front of you uh, the long overdue dashboard, uh, which has been uh, talked about, banted about. I just uh, informed uh, Jessica Sullivan that she beat me up all last year for why this hadn't happened and it's now happened, so she's happy. Uh, but what you have is a first uh, draft, if you will, of what would be considered a, a dashboard or a, a snapshot look-see at our town as well as our school budgets. These are really uh, documents that all come from those 28 pages, the eye exam that we give you every month. What this does is it funnels all of that information into this report here and comes up with the key elements of where we are in relationship to this year's budget, but also compares to what we had budgeted last year. And it breaks it out into the current year as well as key revenues. And you can see, I mean, look at excise tax, where we are today. We've uh, received to date 980000 on a budget of $1.8 Last year we budgeted one point seven for the year. Um, and uh, that puts us at 54.43% in terms of run rate against that, uh, against that target. So it gives you some, some, you know, some numbers to look at that are key elements of what we do in municipal government. And then um, you look at the next uh, section, which is a mis miscellaneous data. It talks about our tax rate, but it gives you um, the percentage of um, collections so far year to date. Thank you, Deb, for the work that you and your team do in the tax office. At the bottom, we've experimented with two sections. One is a discussion of revenue issues, and there are some highlights there that relate to um, primarily how monies come to us at the state level and how they're impacted by you know, enrollments and some of the other factors. And then in the last um, section, we've uh, got a discussion of, against expenditures, and again, We've made some statements in there about how cyclical and how seasonal some things are. 
um, again, absent specific issues we're addressing. We're just giving you sort of an overview of what might be discussed in that section. And at the bottom, um, we've talked about uh, personnel costs and health insurance and benefit costs and some of the other things. Again, these two sections, these discussion sections, will be more directed to the numbers that you get in this report as opposed to these are kind of plugged statements, if you will, even though they're, they're, they're actual statements. They don't necessarily address anything in particular or any concerns or raise any issues that we as a council should be concerned about. But um, I want to thank uh, Scott Wyman, who, um, who helped develop this, and also Michael um, for his input and what both Michael and uh, Scott and myself, what we're looking for from you is as you understand this and we have a little more experience with it, and then pull out the 28 pages and find something in there that we need to be addressing, tell me about it, give me the feedback so that we can improve this form on a monthly basis and get it to where you as a town councilor can feel good about your fiduciary responsibilities here in Cape Elizabeth in terms of how we're spending the good tax dollars of our citizens. So this is the first, first attempt and I, I can tell you it's, um, you know, it's been a work in progress the last couple of months but um, I'm excited to see this um, because again uh, we're all busy people and uh, this gets you the information you need but if it doesn't address something specific that you're looking for, you need to relate that to me or to Scott or to Michael, and let's get it in this, in this uh, particular uh, presentation. So um, without any you know, further discussion, um, and unless people wish through the chair to ask me anything, I'm more than happy to, but it is, um, it is a departure from where we've been, uh, but I think a good one. Councillor Wagner? I hate to be the guy that points out the typo, but I think there's a one order of magnitude on, off on the first line, total municipal for spent to date, it says 549,000, should be 5.4 million. Right here, if we burn through 57%, it's going to buy 5.4 million. Again, when this, um, Just when this arrived early today, um, it was, a, again, a draft. <laughs> and and I, it, I, I responded back to, to Scott after 4 o'clock, and I think he'd already gone for the day, <laughs> because there are not only that, but there's also the date at the top that's not completed. Right. There's also a couple of spacing um, issues in some of the sentences at the bottom. Bottom line is, again, um, you know, we're, we wanted to get this in front of you, and I do apologize for that, Jim. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And I, I was helping a citizen on an issue. So I could, you might have explained this, uh, Councilor Walsh, but also you know that the plan is got the percentages of where we were a year ago too. Yeah, there, are, there's another column are, yeah, that's yeah, yeah missing that's the, again. Uh, work in progress, like I said, and, and Scott is is deeply involved in, in in the initial phases of creating the school budget for next year. So uh, he's been kind of doing this in in between other things. Any other feedback other than uh, you know the fact that uh, there are a couple of misses. Yes, Jessica. I think, think with, yeah, thank you. If, with uh, the chairman's permission, I think this is wonderful. I, I like the, the, the breakdown. Mm -hmm. I like the color changes because it just makes this kind of data easier to read. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the only thing that I would like to see personally that's not here, and I, I don't know how you would present it, but what is our debt level? And that would include, you know, our bond debt level, current and projected. So some sort of capture of that. It's the only thing I can think of that mm -hmm. might be a good addition to this, but otherwise I think it's terrific. I think we can figure out a way, mm -hmm. Michael. And, you know, it's, it's uh, again, that number isn't going to move all that much on no, a monthly basis, not, but it but will change. And uh, again, it's uh, looking at it at a 50,000 foot view. It does make it more public, if you will, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the disclosure. Thank you very much. So we'll be getting one of these each month. Is that that's the plan? The plan. Well, yes. Oh, wonderful. Unless there's, uh, it'll be in a. Pa it'll come in your. Pa we'd like it to come in the packet. Now, I don't know timing wise, Michael, whether that lines up with the closing of the books every month. But our hope is to get it to you ahead of time. When that. No, that's that's. We try to get the financial statements in the packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. So the only other thing on the financial uh, committee report is that. Um, 
as part of a new protocol with the town manager, we've asked him to give an overview of what he sees our budget to look like in 2016. And that's one of our items on today's agenda. And for Patty, new to the council, this was a change in the way we had done things previously. And the focus there was as the town manager gives direction to the department heads and the municipal side of the business, that he tells them with our concurrence, is what we want you to do in terms of constructing your budget so that when it comes to us, it isn't a complete surprise. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Walsh. Um, moving on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Uh, seeing no one, I will go on to the town manager's monthly report. Thank you, uh, Chairman Ray. I just wanted to briefly uh, Councilor McCausland had asked about the, the library. Just wanted to update everyone. Uh, I think everyone knows the library's been closed uh, this past week as, as well as today. Uh, it, it's really interesting. I, I think I sent you a photograph uh, the other day of the, the old library all cleared out. The, the stacks are all gone. And, uh, you know, some of those uh, have gone to other departments. The police department took some. Some have gone into storage. Some have gone into the, the, the temporary library. And some went to restore, which is a, I think that's the name of it, the program of Habitat to Humanity. They have a, a equipment used that, you know, that the people reuse, not for profits and whatever. Uh, so some of the, the shopping went to them as well. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the in, the work at the Sperling School in particular is coming along well. Uh, the library staff's been busy. All of the the, the books have reached out. The books that are going to remain. Uh, the children's library is in good shape. Uh, the, the only hold up at this point is that, you know, I think the council's aware, I know the council's aware that we put a hold on the, the exterior site work uh, for about a week. That was fully lifted at the end of last week. Uh, and the one item that need, still needed to be done that involved outside digging uh, in order to get the experiment school open is the expansion of a sprinkler up into the attic. Uh, it's amazing what the, you end up, you find out you have to do when you already been using a building, but suddenly you're reusing it. The state fire marshal wants to sprinkle up in the attic. And uh, it, that involves the laying, believe it or not, of about 20 feet of pipe outside. And that, with scheduling, there was some scheduling issues between the water district and the contractor and everyone else. That's due to be done tomorrow. So uh, the building inspector and the fire chief are going to be over there at some point tomorrow and do a, do a final inspection of in advance of uh, granting a certificate of occupancy for the temporary use of the Spurman School. And we're fairly confident that everything will go well, but again, we, you know, we'll see what happens. So the current intent is for the uh, library to uh, reopen on Wednesday. The financing is going to be beginning this month as well, uh, looking to actually borrow that money uh, mid-March. So we will be start to see drafts of the official financial statements for the bond. Uh, that's progressing along well. You know, any project starts, you know, it has a few challenges, but uh, overall, you know, we're, we're looking a year from now with a nice new, beautiful, restored and new facility. And, uh, you know, moving along. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Was it you, you asked for an update? Did you want through you? Uh, anything more you want to know about it? I didn't. That's very nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, the uh, private fundraising, I see a big star mm. on the thermometer. What's that all about? I haven't seen the star yet, but I haven't yeah, been a, in the last day. It's like they, they met yes. the goal. Yes, we have met the goal. And I think that we have a little bit more work to do on our building committee side of things to figure out exactly what we need for furniture, fixtures, and equipment. But mm -hmm. very nice to have the $700,000 goal met. A lot of support. Very broad and very deep support throughout the community. Very exciting. Great. Great. Any other questions about the library? Michael, did you have some more to report on? Yeah, just very briefly. In, in the materials now posted for the council packet for this evening is a report from an, an outfit called Safety Works. Safety Works is a is a unit of the Department of Labor, and and what they do is is particularly with work related places. Uh, they do safety inspections and in early December we asked them to come do an inspection of the transfer station. Uh, we got the report today. Uh, they've done that report. Again, it's in the council packet section for tonight's meeting of the website. 
and and basically the report, you know, for the a lot in in large part mirrors what what, what it occurred and came up with in terms of identifying issues and problems. They did identify a problem with people violating the speed limit, and and, and this is there again their their, you know, they were talking particularly going to the swap shop that people were were, were violating the speed limit. Uh, they, they suggested that we look at speed bumps <coughs> as well as some type of you know devices to to reduce speed uh, they they strongly suggested we we try to get everyone moving in the same direction they said it it looked a bit I don't know if chaotic was the right word but a similar word to that of everyone moving in every different direction uh, they indicated that they thought it was best that the transfer station itself uh, not have vehicles going in it at all that there be some way of you know, you know, people not actually driving and getting close to it and, and walking in. So, it, it's you know, it was another independent review. It, you know, they, the, the state didn't call, uh, you know, saying we're coming to do an inspection. It's just the opposite. Uh, we, we had contacted them to do it. So, uh, again, it, it is a, a public document. And this is mine. I think they didn't like the way the fire extinguisher was 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 hung on the wall. There was something else about grease. Wasn't the material data safety sheet. For, potentially being a hazardous waste is that not a hazardous waste but just something you need on the material that you know a couple of minor comments like that Jamie's in front of it put in front of me right now but if I covered anything else uh, did you see talked about the swap shop yeah the swap shop uh, what could one can read it aloud so it says, much of the traffic at the transfer station is for citizens visiting the swap shop don't know if I agree with that, but yeah. you know, that's their point. Although the swap shop is located just inside the entrance to the facility, citizens must drive through the entire site in order to get to the swap shop parking area. Consider relocating the swap shop or provide an alternative, alternate access to it to reduce traffic in the vicinity of the compactor or eliminate it altogether. Maintain one-way traffic flow. Yeah, having, you know, when we read that today, I don't know if it's been forwarded yet, the report to the Long Range Committee has it been. I know, I meant, has it already gone? It went out this afternoon to the Long Range Committee, so. You know, but it, again, it, uh, you know, we're continuing to look at those issues. Receive feedback, and you know, we will be implementing the short-term aspects of it next week. Uh, and you know, the long-term will be dependent on, on the committee. But there's a mailing going out, it's at the printers now. Uh, we're also, the, the, the mailing uh, is, the same mailing's also purchased and added in the next Cape Korea. Make sure that those that the, the mail is only going to uh, property owners. Uh, it's it's not going to the, the renters. And the Cape Fury goes to all of them. So we'll make sure the work gets done. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Yes. I just have a quick question, Mike. Does this report say that people are speeding around to get to the swap shop, or are they going straight to the swap shop instead of doing the loop? I'm not sure if it was exactly clear on, on that. It, yeah, it seems uh, like they separated it. Yeah. Just general uh, speeding problem. General, yeah. Speeding problem, not a traffic yeah, problem. Of violating the posted speed limits. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But they also talk about being a bit disorganized. So the, yeah. whole, the whole setup is yeah. contributing to some. some yes. Again, you know, for, for those that are interested in this issue, there are quite a few people in the community, you know, it, it, Encourage folks to read the report. You know, in all of this, we want to be fully transparent, uh, you know, about everything. And uh, you know, I think it was it was important that we, we bring in not only one but two outside professional views with expertise and safety and expertise and trans transfer stations to the facility. Jessica, um, yes, I I just want to correct. I I don't know, Mike. I was confusing this with Woodward and Curran. I don't know if okay. Safety Works has gone to the new committee yet or not. Yeah, I, I hadn't received it other than in tonight's packet. Bob and I had a discussion like this happened, so it just might not have gone Okay. Yes. Yeah, I just I, I was at the the compactor area over the weekend, and I, I talked to some staff there, and I, I just encourage uh, the director of public works. And, and the manager to consult with the, uh, the staff there yeah. um, to get their input on the yeah. safety design. Yeah, I just uh, thank you, Council Mike. We, we have done that. I had a meeting with with uh, the, with Mary uh, at the transfer station. 
uh, last week with Bob and with representative of the Teamsters. Uh, and similarly, uh, Bob had a separate meeting with uh, Mary and Aiden, who was the other gentleman who works there. You know, and, and, you know I, have, uh, I have encouraged them. I encouraged, I, I didn't participate in the second meeting, but I encouraged with Bob uh, that we, we really want to see the staff to engage with, with individuals to acknowledge their presence, you know, even if it's just a wave, uh, just to, you know, to make sure that, you know, that uh, when citizens go, they're, they're, they're made to feel, feel fully welcome. And, you know, and we, you know, we, we consult, we also would occur and met with the staff there beforehand. You know, the, the, the staff, I, I, you know, no secrets. The, the, the staff, maybe they've said to you, they'd really like to see more staffing, more folks. That's where the discussion that I had comes out with engagement is, you know, I'm not willing to recommend additional staff unless, you know, I get, I get and I'm not talking, I'm not talking about any one employee, but this is a, this, let me call this an historic complaint. I won't say it affects any of the folks there. Is that we have staff there who's in the office and they're not engaging with people. And so, you know, I'm not willing to propose to the council that we fund extra people unless I'm fully confident that we're getting the full value uh, from personnel on site. Again, you know, there's probably more detail, but we want to be transparent, uh, you know, if the, the staff, you know, has different discussions and they're speaking with counselors about it. I, I think you need to know the full story of what, what, what the discussions and dialogue have been. I did encourage uh, Mary and Aiden to yeah. send us some uh, their input by email yeah. to the council members and we can pass it on to the, yeah. the committee that's um, been mm -hmm. formed now. Any other questions? Is that all you That's it. That's it. Okay, great. Um, we'll be moving on to the review of the draft minutes for the December 8th, 2014. Is there a motion to accept? And so moved. Yes. Is there a second? Yes. Second. And any uh, discussion, changes, errors, omissions? No? Okay. All in favor? None opposed. All right. And then we'll move on to item 27-2015, the proposed town council goals for 2015, which we have talked about uh, considerably. Um, so tonight we are looking at the adoption of these goals. Um, is there a motion to accept these goals as our 2015 goals? Council Walsh? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> Councilor Grennan, yes? Um, any discussion? Any further discussion? No? All right, all in favor? And there are none opposed. All right. Moving on to item 28, 2015, the proposed amendments to the Planning Board Rules and Regulations. These are in your packet. And we have uh, Peter Curry here from the Planning Board. Should people have questions for him, maybe he wants to say something about this. I think, is Mike trying to set something up? The, uh, the chair normally comes before you when this type of event happens. Uh, Victoria Bullen, the chair, was not available, so I'm pinch hitting for her. Thank you. And um, you have, I believe, the memorandum and the text of the proposed rules, and just a couple of words. The procedural rules, I think, were adopted at the urging of the uh, council to permit workshop uh, <coughs> pardon me, votes on conflicts and certain scheduling items. The site walk procedures pretty much codify the policies that we've had, and I know Councilor McCullough <coughs> McCullough does have a, a, a question. The internet research um, simply establishes a process for any independent inquiry done by board members to be channeled back through the town planner so that the applicants are aware of any information that we might have received from external sources so they wouldn't be surprised or uh, not know the same things that we know. So that in a nutshell is it, and I'd be delighted to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Questions for Mr. Curry? Yes. Um, could you speak to that point we were discussing just before the meeting about the limiting of um, questions during site walks by planning board members and the distinction between 
limiting questions from planning board members and limiting questions from any members of the public who are attending the site work? Certainly. Um, I think I'm in solid grounds in saying this. The, the metaphor of the site walk is pretty much the workshop model transplanted in on out to the site. And uh, we've always, I think, followed this model. So the, the chair, and is normal at a meeting, controls the questions. The public is invited. I believe it's safe to say that we don't permit public questions in a site walk. I'm, I'm not totally sure on that. And I think if a public member had a question, they could probably ask a member to ask it on their behalf. I don't know. But the idea is simply to inspect the physical environment, have the applicant there to a answer any questions that the board members have about the physical environment, but to not engage in a discussion about the, the substantive uh, application and whether or not the proposed site plan is in line or not. It's really, it's really to inspect the physical premises, and we try to cut it off at that. So even, even board members who might want to debate whether uh, a policy reflected in such and such a section of the ordinance is being observed or not, that should be saved for the, the regular meetings in which you know the public record is taken and whatnot. So it, it is a very much of a physically oriented inspection of the premises and the discussion is controlled. We also, as you've probably noticed, ask people all to stay together. We don't want groups wandering off and having ex parte conversations um, about the application. So that, that's what's behind all this. Thank you. Yes? Yeah, I'll note that in your um, redlined version of the, the rules that it said site walk attendees may only ask questions with the permission of the planning board chair. So uh, I'm assuming that means planning board members or the public. Well, it's, in, it's ambiguous. I, I must say, I, I, th I think it means everybody. Uh, but I don't think direct questions from uh, members of the public would normally be entertained right. because it is kind of the, the workshop model where they're not allowed to speak. Right. But as I say, if somebody has a real serious question, the, the chair can permit it or the person can probably find somebody, a, a board member who would you know, say, would you mind asking this question for me? It hasn't, it hasn't been a problem. As I say, it's, it's pretty much the physical you know, is this an oak tree or a maple tree, and where is the drainage oil going, and stuff like that. Right. So, could a planning board member still ask those questions? What, what, I'm sorry, which question? Whether it's an oak tree or a maple tree, or where oh, the oil is oh, on the property. Yeah, those the, sorts of the, the board members are, have free questioning on any of the, of, of the items like this. It would not be a proper place for a board member to ask the applicant something which relates to the merits of the application itself. You know, why aren't you putting in a curb cut here like you're supposed to, or, you know, that should be saved for the meeting. Mm -hmm. the, the, the meeting, the site walks are really helpful. They, 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 they create an understanding of the application you can't possibly get from sitting inside or even seeing pictures that they've taken. So it's, it's a very important tool, but we are careful to try to keep the discussion of the merits of the application aside and deal with it at, at a regular meeting. Great. Yes, Caitlin? Well, just to point out what Jamie was saying, I'm not sure you're quite touching on it. I think the wording of it, as Jamie was reading it, says that the planning board members can't ask questions unless the chair gives them permission, the way it's written. And you're saying they can, so maybe we need some tweaking of the words just to clarify that. Oh, I'm sorry, I was, I was addressing a, a different point. As in a normal meeting, the, the discussion, even of the board members, is controlled by the chair. Just like if, if you want to speak, the, the chair will recognize you and you can ask your question, whatever. Yeah, that's all that's intended to address. And it's really trying to keep control of the event because when you're out in somebody's field and it's you know, raining and windy and people are wandering around and having, you know, side conversations. The chair in Victoria has been very good at this, really has to focus on keeping everybody together and then and focusing. Got it. Any other questions? Oh, okay. Oh, yes. oh I just have another question. Yes. Re regarding the um, notifying uh, 
when somebody makes an application, the neighbors, and you took out the line that said it goes to, you know, within 500 feet of the property, and it used to be that it was, um, or the 25 properties around it. Just give, give some background, the reason why you took that out and what the change was, was it redundant, or did you think it was not necessary? Um. I, section six procedures. Yeah, I, I wish I, I wish Maureen was here. Uh, I believe that there was a conscious decision. The, the software is, is so good that you can notify almost any collection of people you want. Okay. And I think it was felt that the, um, the 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 distance standard really took care of things adequately. Okay, thank you. Just to uh, point out, maybe Michael remembers, but didn't this 500 foot issue come up as a result of some of the conversations in the Trundy Point area? That I think we were trying to expand, if you will, the notification process, the transparency, if you will, as opposed to just limiting to a certain number of properties, which, you know, I, I think that it, that's really where that all had Okay, come so 500 from. feet was, was more, because I think when because of the fact they do have software that's so much more sophisticated. Okay. Yeah, At least that's what I remember, but it, it may be wrong. But that's okay. the, the configuration of the lot and the configuration of the, uh, the abutting lots right. could con really govern under the other, the deleted standard, who gets noticed. And I think the, the 500 thing is much more inclusive okay. and mm -hmm. better, better disclosure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, if, if we were to vote on this tonight, um, barring any kind of an amendment if Jamie wanted to tweak that language to make it cleaner. Um, would this go into effect immediately or does it have? The, the way this, these are the planning board's bylaws and they propose the council says yay or nay. If, if the council has specific changes you'd like to see, it would need to be referred back to the planning board. Okay. And you know, if you do adopt it tonight, it is effective immediately. So we'd be happy to confirm to you is, you know, policy and clarification, anything outside the, the words of the rule that you think is important that we're happy to endorse. So then my question would be, given that knowledge, would it be in our best interest here, based on the few questions that have come up about this issue, to refer it back and clean that up? I, I just you know, if, if it's not, you know, the end of the world here to, to spend another month and get it right, I mean, I just put that on the table as an option. Jessica? Well, as it states in number four in red lighting, red, uh, red uh, letters, site walk attendees may only ask questions with the permission of the planning board chair. Is that the issue? In yeah, I think it's cleared up. It's cleared up. Yeah. I, think it, I don't think there's an issue. You know, as we understand it, that includes members of the board or members of the public. It's just a you know, a discussion control device that you folks probably uh, use here in your regular meetings also. I guess I would say if somebody wants to make a motion to accept, then we will proceed that way. Jessica? So move. Okay. Is there a second? Caitlin? Was that it? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You look like you had a Throw my hand was out a there. question or no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, further discussion. Amy. Yeah, no, I appreciate Jim's point, but I think Peter's explanation about it really just going through the chair is adequate to address. Yeah. The issue. Okay, just want to make sure that's all. Okay. Yes. So, are we all clear that that is what this language says? That people are allowed to ask questions as long as they are going through, and I have no problem with that as long as people are allowed to ask questions, because that isn't clear to me that that's what that language says. Well, the site walk attendees may only ask questions with the permission of the planning board like chair. This. So if the planning board chair says no questions, does that mean no planning board members cannot ask questions? Yeah. Michael? Yeah. Right. You know, Mr. Curry is a great member of the board, been there a couple years. Yes. You know, different chairs have handled it differently over the years. And quite frankly, you know, the board schedules these Sometimes when they're on their way to work, you know, for like 15 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's difficult to schedule these. And sometimes they just want to look quickly and get, leave. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the board's been responsible for that. But what they've tried to do is to avoid every board member going independently to sites so that, 
so that they're not trespassing and so that you know they're not having conversations alone that are ex parte communications so the, the, the reason the site walk is that they're all there at the same time they're all seeing the same things as, as part of the record and the you know it, it, it's not and it's never been looked at as an op really as an is as the opportunity for public comment and review you know one of the, the board is aware when they're there that anything is said at a sidewalk is is just hearsay it has no standing so what happens is you know someone will ask a question at the sidewalk and some planning board member will answer it and then three years later we'll hear well so and so said at the sidewalk such and such mm -hmm. and so so for that reason there are always if there has been a bias the bias is to keep the sidewalks brief, to, to look at things, to not have a whole lot of discussion, to, to see what they need to see, and to get out of there. Because it, it does cause public confusion as to you know, what actually is, is the purpose of a sidewalk and what is, you know, and, and unfortunately what is said there, you know, unless it gets in the final planning board vote, the conditions of approval, or it gets noted on the plan, it has no standing. So as a result, we, we just, uh, it's, we, the, the board's been hesitant over the years to, to fully engage during sidewalks. They, you're quite right, they are time sensitive and sometimes it'll be early morning before people go to work. Sometimes we'll be plowing through, you know, woods and bramble and whatnot and it's, it can be a little bit chaotic. So, you know, keeping control and keeping things moving and keeping things tight is, is important and the, the different chairmen have different approaches but I think it's been pretty consistent that we want to get in there get the visual factual information before us and get out of there and, and, and the other thing it is an opportunity for my for the public to see these sites and to consider their views at the same time plenty but for instance they had one a week or two down on a property but there's no trespassing signs where you know you, you're not allowed there the planning board had a site walk they were they were looking at a proposed boardwalk and during that period, the public was invited to go and actually see it. And, you know, so it, it, it does enhance public involvement. Plus, the public can listen to everything, as you know, that's what the right to know law says, and they can write to the board afterward based on something they have heard or seen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they may not be able to be welcome to ask questions there, but there's nothing to prohibit them from, from texting it uh, to, to the board and having it become part of the record. As they walk. As they walk, even they, yeah, as they walk. <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of a song. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions? Are we ready to vote? Okay. All in favor? None opposed. Great. Thank you. And there's another one. I'll maybe just ask you for that. Um, item 29, 215, request from the planning board to extend a deadline. Um, the planning board's asking us to extend to March 31st um, their deadline um, on their report for proposed amendments to the land use sections of ordinances. Did you want to speak to that too? Just a couple of words. This has been a, a, a large and arduous task. We are almost there. There's basically one item which we were awaiting a report from the consultant on and has policy issues tangled up in it. Now that we have the consultant's report, at our next meeting we'll be trying to untangle the policy issues and knock on wood, we're hopeful to have the report to you by March 31st as promised. I'll make a note too that on your list it says that we're going to extend it till year 21,015. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. <laughs> That's a long extension. I think that's a reasonably long. That was a long extension. We're not going to do that. So. Um, okay, so um, why don't we entertain a motion and then we'll go with questions. Councilor Walsh? I'll move that we uh, approve the request from the planning board to extend the deadline uh, to March 31st, 2015. Thank you. I'll Council second. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Questions? Yes, Jimmy. It, although it's not directly related to this request, I, I know that we did have a discussion at the last planning board meeting about maybe requesting an extension to the deadline for the other work that we talked about on the um, special event. Special event. Oh, right, right. Um, I don't, I don't know if we should put that on our next agenda, but the the idea being that. 
the planning board could use a little bit more um, direction from the council on the special events uh, proposed ordinance. Um, possibly we could bring that up, uh, or we could discuss that in the ordinance this week and report back to the council. What's the normal procedure, Mike, for the uh, planning board comes yep. back to the council if they have a quick request? You know, this is this is the special events ordinance, which looks at at you know where large events can happen, and the, the initial proposal that came to the board uh, to the council had that it it only be on a certain number of sites. The board at the very first meeting had lots of questions. Maybe we ought to allow this in the IRA zone, the IRB zone, the IRZ zone. You know, they, they get in immediately. They wanted a history of, they wanted a long history. Uh, you know, the, the, the council has had concern with some of these reviews taking too long. And the, the council took a decision three or four months ago indicating that in the normal course of things, you wanted them to do it over a three meeting cycle or a three month cycle and that they come back. This would be the first time that, that I think you put a deadline on of that, that, you know, we already have a request made. I think we have, do we have a request? I'm not sure. We do. I think it's yeah. the end of March, wasn't it, Peter? So I, believe it, I believe that's right, yeah. 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 So, you know, it's, it's up to the council. You determine the deadlines, but I just remind you that you had expressed concerns about some of these reviews, particularly of ordinances taking an extended period. So, you know, if, if you do want to give an extension, I would advise you do it to a date certain based on your earlier concerns and discussion. Yeah. It's, but it's not on our agenda this evening. It's not on your agenda, no. Right. No. Okay. You know, I think I could speak for the board saying some additional time would really be a good thing as the proposal is, Councilman Walsh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Jamie knows, is, um, took, had a lot, of, a lot of discussion, a lot of issues, and very uncomfortable with just a, a quick decision. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, then um, we need, um, I'm sorry, did we have a motion? Yes. We did, okay. Additional discussions, questions about the motion to extend the deadline for the land use? Okay, all in favor? Okay, none opposed. All right then, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Uh, moving on to item 30, 2015, budget update for fiscal year 2016. This, I, I was hoping to have an, an overhead, but the adapter wasn't there. And this is now posted on the website on, for the council meeting tonight, but there is not a uh, link to it on your agenda. So I'll hand it out and I'll wait for the sheets to go around. As, as, before I get into it, but just by way of background, as Councilor Walsh mentioned, last year you had asked me to, before the budgets came to you, the budget came to you, before I, Review department head budgets to get you a, a high level look at what the budget might look like. Uh, as I can indicate, the council agenda waited until today because the governor was uh, presenting his, his uh, budget recommendation last Friday. We wanted to see what that looked like. But anyway, the current the current budget's you know about 9.2 million. Uh, the li the the, big, the biggest impact this next year is going to be the library bond. And the last estimate we got of what that's going to cost is $299,000 and change uh, for, for next year. So uh, penciled in that that would be a $300,000 impact on the budget. Personnel pay and benefits is based on an average increase of wages and benefits of 2.5%. Uh, the additional human resource cost, 30000 that is there's going to be a proposal in the budget that the school department and the town share an HR assistant to help with benefit administration, to help with employee handbooks, and a whole host of things that have grew out of the discussion that's been continuing over the last year of uh, what we might do with HR issues. Uh, legal fees, uh, you know, we're continuing to overspend that account, uh, you know, particularly as development picks up again and different proposals. Uh, you know, I just I'd probably recommend an increase there. If we take the, the portion of the budget that is not payroll related, uh, if you increase that by, if it was increased by 1%, it 
which is you know all the ups, all the different ups and downs and that you routinely have in a budget, that adds up to uh, forty five thousand. We're expecting some energy savings of at least thirty thousand. That that m amount is still in play. We've locked in our heating oil already for next year at two oh eight something and. I had a recommendation today to lock in gasoline, and I said no. Uh, you know, just gasoline alone, no, excuse me, crude oil alone, the, the, the New York NYMEX, whatever they call it, went down a little over 5%. Oh. So, you know, we subsequently checked again with the company, and they agreed where the trend is going like this. And, you know, articles today said it's, you know, crude went under what, four, went down to about 46 today. And but it, it's it, you know it went down two dollars today. Uh, so in in heating oil, in, excuse me, gasoline those futures also went down. Not as much as crude oil futures today, but still you know we're going to be looking at it almost every day. And you know we we still think there's enough downside potential that we're willing to risk a little upside potential. Yeah, if I could just comment on yeah. that. I was listening to NPR on the way over here, and I heard on the nightly business report that Goldman Sachs came out with a report today yeah. saying they're anticipating prices are going down for the next yeah. two years. Yeah, Goldman Sachs, I think it was $42 per, per barrel, and now it's 46 So, you know, they, they, they revised the targets. So, you know, we'll see. But we expect some savings there. You know, the next item is capital needs, and that's one that, you know, we, we have this goal of increasing the, the capital, 100000 per year because of, you know, the, the roads and the condition of some of those. You know, that's going to be one area that, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's a number that's being inserted into this high-level projection because it, 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 it is in conformance with that uh, current council policy. Uh, it's not to say that my budget's necessarily going to have that amount recommended as an increase. Uh, anyway, you add all that together, it's 585000 uh, if you add that to the budget, it's about a 6.3% increase in spending. But again, if you look at that, uh, more than half of it's attributable to, to the library, uh, the spending. If you look at the tax rate impact, and this is the, the tax rate of the, the entire municipal budget, including schools, the county, it's, it's uh, 40 cents per thousand. Uh, if you look at how that compares to last year, the municipal tax increase was zero cents per thousand. The school increase was 52 cents. So a $300,000 home uh, at 40 cents per thousand would see an increase in their tax bill to support the new library and the rest of the budget of about $60 for the new library and about $60 for, for other pieces. The other, the other point I wanted to highlight is in the governor's budget, he's recommended some changes in the homestead exemption. And the homestead exemption is anyone who is a resident taxpayer of the state of Maine for their principal residence who applies for a homestead exemption gets a $10,000 exemption of their taxes. So if the tax rate is currently $1,680, they get a, a break on their taxes of $168 if they're getting the homestead exemption. What the governor has recommended in his budget is that individuals under 65 would no longer get a homestead exemption. So everyone's tax would increase because of that one decision alone, $168, except for those that are 65 or over, and the governor's proposal is that their homestead exemption be doubled instead of 10,000, be 20,000. So they, as, as a result of just the, those homestead, they would actually get a, a decrease in their taxes before you looked at anything that you did with the, 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 the municipal and school budget of, uh, they would get a decrease of $168. So, you know, the, it's, it's, you know, it's the, the bottom line of the high level is that is that you know it's a much bigger percentage increase than we're accustomed to. We expected that coming into that, uh, into this with the library. Uh, you know the, the other expenses. You know we'll try to hold down as, as much as we can. Uh, but again, I don't have any of the municipal budgets yet from the different departments. Uh, it's still very early in the process, but uh, I think it is important for you to realize that you're probably going to be seeing a budget that will that will be in the range of 40 cent per thousand proposed increase, which be, even before you begin to look at the school budget, that would increase the overall tax rate by around 2.5%. Questions for Mike? 
Yes, Molly. Does the governor have anything to say about uh, revenue sharing? And is yes. that factored into yep. this? The, the governor uh, doesn't like revenue sharing. No, no surprise there. Uh, he uh, said, you know, it, it should be funded at a level of, in, in these numbers aren't exact, of like 120 million. And th these I'm using, for example, they aren't exact million. But, you know, but they've, they've, both the Democrats before him and while he's been in there, is they've rated that amount. So he, he has indicated that for this next fiscal year, that he is still recommending that it be funded at essentially the same level that it ended up being funding funded it this year. It's not to say that everyone, every community will get the same, but it's be recommended the same level. He has recommended that the following year it be zeroed out, which would be a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar hit to Cape Elizabeth. You know, he's also recommended as part of that whole budget that folks will that huge changes in in uh, sales tax. Uh, a change, uh, an increase to 6.5 percent. He's recommended a, a reduction in the auto rental tax. He's recommended uh, uh, a change in the meals and the, the meals tax. Uh, you know, it, there's, a, there's a whole package of them. And it, what's, what's interesting is that it, it, his recommendations parallel fairly closely a tax reform package that independent, then independent Senator Woodbury put forward and the Democrats put forward, and the, the Republican Party opposed them, got signatures on a ballot, and the citizens agreed with them. And, and now what, what he's proposing is, is a, a lot closer to what the Democrats and the Independent had. So it's just going to be interesting to see the way it plays out, to see if the Democrats still favor of it, now that LePage is proposing it, and to see if the Republicans still oppose it, even though LePage is... is proposing it. So it's going to be interesting. But, you know, but what the governor is trying to do is to reduce the income tax. That's, that's his, his big goal. And he's got, he's got a four-year plan to, to reduce the, I think, the, the income tax is like from 7.95 to 5.75, something like that. And it's over four years. And, you know, to Cape Elizabeth, you know, Maine has an income tax that the highest rate goes into, into place like at 20, the low 20,000s. Uh, so you quickly get to the top bracket in income tax. So, you know, one thing, you know, it's, you know, his, his goal is to, in, there's a report online, he's had the tax foundation to it, is to reduce the overall burden of taxes in Maine to make it, to make it more attractive to business development. And this, I think it's a, I would assume it's a conservative tax foundation group that he sent it to. They indicated that it would, it would bring Maine, you know, down to the mid-level of our tax burden. Uh, compared to the other states across the country. So, you know, it's a, there's about to be a really fascinating debate in Augusta. And, you know, and it, it behooves us to, to really look at it, look at it carefully. The other issue that's there, and even MMA sent a summary out today that didn't even mention it, is he's recommending more of the teacher retirement be turned over to uh, municipal governments by essentially putting teacher retirement. Right now, it's, I think it's only like 5 or 10% of the cost. He's proposing, and I'm not sure of the time frame, it's a little bit unclear, that it become part of the funding formula. And if it becomes part of the funding formula, that means we would go in, in over whatever the, the period of time of implementation is, that's unclear, from 100 percent a little over a year ago to about 20 percent of teacher retirement cost being funded by the state. So, you know, you know that's, to this community, you know, that's much bigger than revenue sharing in terms of the bottom line of, of how it affects uh Because, you know, teacher retirement cost is up in the range of $2 million a year. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a big issue. So, you know, so I think as, as the legislative session goes forward, we're really going to have to watch revenue sharing. We're going to have to watch teacher retirement. Uh, there's some minor changes in school funding subsidy formula, but it initial glance it doesn't seem too impactful but you never know but uh, you know it's we're in for an interesting session in Augusta there's also the general assistance change as much as you would expect the governor to do there's some we get a 50 percent reimbursement he's really trying to hit the communities that spend a lot more and get 90 percent reimbursement and, uh, he's uh, looking at uh, reducing that by some complicated formula or 40 percent of this and of the first fifth, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, 
it's, it's going to be interesting to watch. So anyway, you know, there's still going to be probably some surprises in the municipal budget, uh, but, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, we'll, we'll do our best, but, you know, as, as I've said in my goals last year and continues to this year, you know, I look at it, my responsibility is to get the needs before you, and I plan to continue to do that. Great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Questions for Mike? Okay. Then we will move on to item 31, 2015, the proposed merger of February council meeting and council workshop. Uh, Mike? Yeah. You know, at the beginning of the, the council year, often, you, you know, the council really worked very hard at the end of last year and wanted to clear the slate and get all these issues resolved. And now the issues are getting teed up again. Uh, but in teeing them up again, they're not ripe for action at the council meeting yet. And, you know, looking ahead, we just don't see a whole lot coming up for the February agenda. So what we're proposing is, is that we merge the two meetings into, that were proposed, a workshop and a council meeting, into one meeting we do it on the council night. And uh, you'll have your council meeting that, you know, will be less than an hour like this one. And then you'll have a workshop for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, save yourself out being out two nights. Anybody have any objections? No? Great. Thank you. Um, I would say citizen opportunity for discussions of items not on the agenda, but there's nobody in the room. Um, do we have to vote on that, Mike? On the merger of the two meetings? Uh, no, I, I think, no, because you're not, if you, if you were changing the council meeting itself, there's some rule somewhere you need to, you need to vote, but you don't need to in workshops. Okay. No. Thank you. Thanks for reminding us, Jim. Um, okay, so um, there's nobody here to discuss items not on the agenda, so I assume nobody's racing in the back door. Um, so we'll move on to item 32, 2015, which is the town manager's annual evaluation, the beginnings of, and I'm looking for a motion to be read as per our agenda. Is there a motion? Jessica? <clears throat> I move that um, in conformance with one MRSA, uh, is that State section? section 405, thanks, 6A, we enter into executive session to begin the annual evaluation process for the town manager. Is there a second? Molly, thank you. Um, any discussion? All in favor? And none opposed. And we will not be returning to uh, our meeting here in case anybody at home is watching and wants to continue. So, <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 